Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is CellBC, and doing a quick video update here from my little LED test garden. And for all you guys that don't know what is going on, I basically have a 450 watt Pro Spectra LED system. And when I say 450 watt, that is the true consumed wattage. Essentially, the only real measure of uh, you know the performance of these LED systems is the, by the wattage they truly consume, not by the wattage rating of the LEDs themselves. So um, yeah, these are basically two SFP OG moms that I've been working on here in this garden for a long time. And man, guys, it has really just been amazing, uh, this LED. Now, I, uh, previously I did have two of these LED systems. Now I've only got one. And even so, guys, with only one single LED system, I mean, no, I mean, seriously, guys, we cut SFBOGs about once every 10 days, and they need generally all 10 of those days under a full 600 watt HPS and super lumen road, full saturation, you know, to get adequate regrowth to really take strong, good quality cuttings. And the cuttings coming out are absolutely excellent. Um, this thing, we can take cuttings, really, really high quality cuttings, mind you, probably pretty damn consistently for about four days. Or at, or at four day intervals um, and we can probably do that for a while before the, the plant gets all messed up but you know we cut these things on the exact same day as cut day you know Danko G took a lot of clumps and within just three or four days I'm like you need to cut that again and I thought I thought maybe you know she just didn't cut enough so she went ahead and took another 25 which is a lot considering you had just taken clones off it a few days ago you take another 25 clones off the two plants and that was just what the day before yesterday maybe three days ago not even not even fully three days and look at these things, they're already completely regrowing. And I've, I've actually shifted them over a little bit because this one is just getting crazy bushy. So basically shifted it over to give this one a little more space to get some. But in about a couple days, this will just get out of control. And I, you know, spin them around, whatever. Um, but yeah, this single LED is just bringing it, guys, as far as veg performance. I really have never thought that I would say something about that, you know, compared to the amount of success that I've had running HPS, especially with the iHortolux, obviously. You know, the best bulb manufacturer out there, really, really good full spec HPS bulb that I've gotten tremendously good results off of, just being trumped by the uh, the LED. Now, I do think the LED has a few distinct advantages, obviously being in a close quarter tent. There, there are a lot of great reflective surfaces in here, but, you know, this thing doesn't have the greatest spread in the world. You know, I keep it pretty close quarter. You can see there's a lot of shadow back here, but still, but the areas that are, that are getting exposure, the growth rate is just ridiculous and they're just so healthy, you know, really, really healthy looking plants. And when I'm only running one single one by itself with an eight inch um, ventilator, you know, pulling a little over 700 uh, CFMs uh, of air through here, it's not a problem, you know, obviously you don't have to run ducting to it, you really can't, obviously, but that air motion is easily good enough to air cool one of these things in a three by five tent and it's really just doing a great job at running these mother plants. So um, we're gonna be essentially upgrading this tent uh, to an eight by four and probably gonna kick it off with the three LED systems that I have right now. You know, obviously a buddy of mine is borrowing my other two to get through his veg cycle, but once his grow is finished, he'll be able to transplant his plants into his flower room and continue vegging. And then he'll have a couple weeks, you know, to uh, work out getting a new lighting system. So it works out perfect because that's about the time that I'm gonna have all this stuff set up with new plants, you know, being moved in and we're, you know, we're basically gonna start growing mothers in here. And we're gonna start seeing, uh, or at least start doing some really, really hardcore tests, you know, measuring off, you know, an LED system, eight by, eight by four inch area against an approximate eight by four, you know, in excess of 2400 watt HPS system. And we're gonna see what these LEDs can really do in a, in a true, you know, production cloning environment. And if the LEDs prove to be superior, then um, we're gonna say goodbye, guys, to all of the 600 watt HPS systems and more than likely also say goodbye to the 150 watt HPS systems that I use in veg. Now, I wanna talk a little bit more in detail about other advantages of upgrading, or I shouldn't say upgrade, but transitioning this uh, flowering room over into an eight x four veg. Uh, firstly, fiscally speaking, if this production is anywhere from what I'm seeing now, you know, it's gonna be equal to or better than, although it is gonna run at a little bit higher expenses. You know, you gotta have to get a lot more rock wool trays. Um, you do burn through newts pretty fast. But not too bad, you know what I'm saying? So you have to take that into effect uh, or into account. But obviously the uh, the, the consistency of, of income is going to be a lot better. You don't have to wait so long between cycles. And that's a huge benefit. Um, and then adding on top of the fact that 
I don't need to have like a whole dedicated bedroom anymore. And that's really important for the money maker because now the money maker is going to get its own dedicated dual flood tables, potentially driven by LEDs. So that means I don't have to constantly flip, um, you know, that those pair of flood tables between two flowering gardens, which I really didn't like doing. You know, I it really, I really think it kind of sacrificed or caused me to have to uh, sacrifice the quality of plants that I've normally transplanted because. I got to get them the fuck out of there because I have another set of plants I got to put in there right away to veg for the other garden. So no more of that. You know, now those flood tables are going to be dedicated strictly for my flowering rooms. And in the off weeks, I can use them to raise mother plants, you know, which is really great. So I don't, I don't have to use my production line to do that. And now with the addition of another, you know, uh, room in which we can take a lot of clones, uh, I can basically take down mother plants, bring in more mother plants without seeing these crushing reductions in production because that kind of sucks sometimes. You know, I've never really been able to work out a, a system to have just one production line and switch out mothers consistently without there being a, a real dip in production. And that dip always hurts because it's bad enough as it is with, with lack of clones and it gets really bad when I'm transitioning between mother plants. You know, it gets just downright ugly out there, you know? So now being able to add another garden equal to the size of the existing production line will essentially stop that from happening. We're just gonna have some great sources for doing lots of clones. And I think that's really, really important. And uh, it's just gonna make my life easier too. You know, less stuff for me, like I said. I'm really, really happy about that. You know, now I can focus on Site B. I can focus on the, uh, the money maker. And I have more stuff on deck, guys. You know, believe me, uh, a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that uh, I'm not showing you here on video. I mean, it just, it gets, I guess the rabbit hole uh, does go deeper, ladies and gentlemen, but that is pretty much it for this video update. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna cover in the next video, but I'm sure it will be something interesting or maybe not. So, but anyways, guys, stick around. See you later. Peace out.